Um, so without further ado, I want to introduce Mr. Rohan Murphy. Thanks for having me. How are you doing today? Oh, great to be here. Once again, my name is Rohan Murphy. I am now a youth motivational speaker from right down the road, East Islip. And today, I'm here with you all to share my story and tell you how I overcame not having legs. But with that said, I'm going to start from the very beginning. And unfortunately, I was born with a very severe birth defect that left both my legs deformed. And usually I speak at schools, all right? So kids usually ask me, Ro, what do you mean deformed? Well, when I was born, my kneecaps were on the opposite side. When I was born, my legs were backwards. That's how bad deformed my legs were. At the time, my doctors really didn't have any answers to my parents, and my parents took it really hard, especially my mom. Went on anyhow to live the first four years of my life with the form legs. Then finally, at the age of four, my parents and doctors decided that it'd be best if I had my legs amputated in hopes of someday, maybe around middle school or even high school, get prosthetic legs, walker prosthetics. So at the age of four, I had my legs amputated, but I had some complications through surgery and now required by additional surgeries afterwards. So as a kid, I spent a lot of time in the hospital, a lot of time in home trying to recover from always even surgeries and procedures. And for the first couple years, I was even homeschooled because physically, I just couldn't go to school. But then finally, in third grade, like any other kid, I began to attend school. And that first day of school back in third grade, <laughs> that's when it hit me. That's when I truly realized that I was different. Because when I first started going to school, there were just so many things I couldn't do on a daily basis that all my friends and classmates were able to do. And a big thing for me at that point in my life, when I was a kid, was the ability to play sports. Because as a kid, I loved sports. I always had a real natural passion for sports. I think love and passion for sports came from my father, Noel, because he named me out of state athletes when he was a kid. The first one was a cricket player by the name of Rohan Kanai, and my middle name, Mario, came from his favorite soccer player, Mario Kempes. And that's how I got my full name, Rohan Mario Murphy. But when you don't have legs, you really can't play too many sports, like a travel, soccer, little league baseball. And at a young age, I never thought that I would ever be given an opportunity to play competitive, able by sports. But thankfully, that all changed. Back in middle school, back in the eighth grade, because of one person, because of one teacher, my eighth grade phys ed teacher, Mr. Ron Croto, or coach, as I called him. And you see, most students at the schools that I go to don't really know or believe that the teachers and administrators in their schools have that ability and that power to truly change their lives for the better. But trust me, believe me, they do. And that's exactly what coach did for me. So coach realized once again, but I'd have my legs, obviously, I couldn't play more sports now, like soccer, which he was coach of at a middle school. So coach is nice enough and kind enough to make me a team manager for a middle school soccer team. If I become a manager for a middle school soccer team, I go to practice every day, I go to all the games, help them take stats and attendance. And finally, for the first time, for the first time, I was actually part of a sports team. And I couldn't believe it. Finally, for the first time in my life, I was actually part of a sports team. I wasn't actually on the team, I was just a manager, but for me, that, that meant the world. And I did a good job anyhow, being a manager for the wrestling team next season as well, during the winter. But then, one day, towards the end of the season, coach says to me, Ro, 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 I have a great idea. I asked him, coach, what's that? He says, Ro, I've been doing some thinking again. I think, I think you could wrestle. Ro, I think you could somehow go out on that mat and wrestle kids with legs and be a wrestler like anyone else. And ask him, right, coach, but if I don't have legs, how in the world can I wrestle? He said, it'll be easy. He said, I'll just have to somehow roll myself out onto the mat, jump on the mat, grab kids' legs, and take them down. <laughs> and, you, and I told him, you know, coach, huh? Thanks for no thanks. I told coach wrestling, uh, it's not for me, coach. I'm just happy being a manager. But I think about coach, what wow, really made him great, what wow, really made him special, and not only as a teacher, not only as a teacher, but as a person. Coach, he didn't give up on me. He did not give up on me. He was just so persistent. Every single day, he would try to get me to join a wrestling team and try to support wrestling. And usually, I'll tell Coach no. But one day after school, Coach finally got a hold of me. Literally. He brought me out to the practice room. He started really showing me and demonstrating to me how I could wrestle. How I could take people down, how I could pin people, even without legs. And I couldn't believe it. Finally, I found a sport that I can do. I found a sport that I could actually play. Not, not just be the manager, but actually be on the team as an athlete. I told him, I coach, you know what? Next year, while I'm in high school, ninth grade, I'm going to somehow, I'm going to try for high school wrestling team. And I'm going to somehow make the team just for you, coach. 
he said, all right. So of course now, I had to go home and I had to talk to my parents about it. But my mom, <laughs> she did not want me to wrestle. She was so worried about me getting hurt, getting injured. And she even said to me, Ro, you're going to be out there wrestling kids with legs. You're going to be at a huge disadvantage. Aren't you worried? Aren't you afraid that you're going to lose a lot? I told her no. I told her no. I wasn't afraid to fail. I wasn't afraid to lose. And I told her, mom, let's be honest. I'm not at just a disadvantage in the sport of wrestling. I'm at a disadvantage in life. Wrestling's easy. Only two things could happen. Either I win or I lose. Life without legs, it's a little bit more complicated. So I talked to my parents anyhow. They said, all right, bro, if we want to, go ahead and do it. So ninth grade year came. They just that, went on high school wrestling team. Went on to wrestle in ninth grade. And that first year, ninth grade, I didn't do too well. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. That first season, I finished with a year. Yearly record of only two and 13 on JP Junior Varsity. Two and 13, two wins and 13 losses. I know, I know, not very good. But after that first year, I started to really think to myself, what if I could somehow overcome this? What if I could somehow, despite of all of this, could we become successful? Could become successful in not only wrestling, not only wrestling, but in school and life as well. In school and life as well. Wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't that be remarkable? Wouldn't that be extraordinary? So after that first year, ninth grade, I started working really hard in sport, training really hard that summer, leading into my 10th grade year. Came back in 10th grade, improved a lot, made a varsity team in 10th grade, and I finished the year in varsity with a record of 25 and six. So in just one year, I went from two and 13 to 25 and six. But still after that year in varsity, winning all those matches, I wasn't happy. I wasn't satisfied. You see, one of my favorite books is a book called From Good to Great. It was written by Jim Collins. And in this book, he discusses how companies fail to make that leap from good to great. How companies like Kmart don't become Walmart. How companies like Blockbuster don't become Netflix. How companies like The Wiz doesn't become Best Buy. You guys remember The Wiz, by the way? Yes. <laughs> Finally, someone, all right. <laughs> that old crowd. <laughs> Kids never get that one. Never, never, never. And I was thinking, that's exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to make that leap. I wasn't content with just being good. Once again, I wasn't satisfied. I want to be not just good, but eventually, I want to become great. After the season, went to our team awards dinner. And my coach was nice enough to give me a team award for most improved wrestler. I remember sitting there holding that big award, that big trophy. And my mom was right next to me. And she asked me, bro, what's wrong? Why aren't you happy? Why aren't you smiling? I told her that I don't want this award for most improved wrestler. I don't want this award. I want the other one. Mm -hmm. I want the award for MVP. I want the award that said best wrestler. So after our dinner, had a little meeting with my coach and asked coach, how can I somehow get to our next level in sport wrestling. Once again, how can I go from good to great? He said, bro, this summer, why don't you try going to a wrestling camp? He said, bro, if you really want to, try going to two camps, maybe even three. I told him, all right, sure. So I went home with my parents anyhow. We did some research on camps from all across the country online. And most of the camps that we found were pretty similar. Three-day camp here, four-day camp there. Nothing really stuck out to me. Then I found this one camp that was pretty special, that was pretty unique. It was called the Jay Robinson 28 Day Intensive Wrestling Camp, which is held all the way out at the University of Minnesota. The camp was developed by a guy by the name of Jay Robinson, who was a coach at the University of Minnesota. And before he was a wrestling coach, he was an Olympic, I think he was an Olymp Olympic medalist, but before all that as well, he was an Army Ranger. So he built this camp around how he trained, be an army ranger. We wake up every single morning, bright and early at 6 a.m., work out for four to five times a day for 20 straight days. And this camp wasn't just about wrestling, it was all about discipline. Discipline, discipline. Let me give you an example of that. There was uh, one day I misplaced my wallet. One of my camp counselors happened to find it. And he asked me, bro, how much money do you have in here? And since my mom didn't really trust me with a debit card, I had a lot of cash, about two to three hundred bucks, you know, it's supposed to be for the entire summer. He says, all right, bro, for every dollar in this wallet, you got to do a push-up. And then he says, you know, bro, you're pretty strong, so I'll tell you what, how about you do two push-ups for every dollar in a wallet? So I ended up doing 600 push-ups. And going to this camp anyhow, back about just going to it in general, you know, for me it was huge. It was so important because growing up as a kid, I had two goals. I had two goals I really wanted to accomplish in life. Well, really three. I'll tell you two of them. Two of them 
where somehow, find a sport that I can play, which I found in sport of wrestling, but the second goal was, someday after high school, I wanted to live on a big college campus. I wanted to live on a big college campus independently, like any other college student, and someday earn a degree and graduate from that college or university. And for me, that was a big deal because growing up disabled, <laughs> don't get me wrong now, I was very lucky, very fortunate, I have a great family, great parents, but my parents, especially my mom, were extremely, extremely overprotective. I guess you could say as a kid, I was pretty sheltered in a sense. To give you an example of that, growing up when I was younger, anytime my class at school would go on a field trip to say the Empire State Building, maybe Washington DC, Forest Valley, my parents, or my mom I should say, would never allow me to go. She never allowed me to attend because she was so afraid that something bad would happen to me. So I finally just got the point in my life and I told my mom that it's just time to let me go. It's time to set me free. I had to figure out if I could be independent. I had to figure out if I could truly someday live on a college campus and be independent once again, like any other kid. So thankfully and him, my parents agreed. They allowed me to go to this camp at the University of Minnesota. And some of those workouts, kids that we had to do as wrestlers, they're pretty tough. They're pretty challenging. Let me give you an example of one. So every single morning, once again, we wake up bright and early. I'm gonna have to take this off for a second. We wake up bright early, 6 a.m., and we would have a running practice. And since I didn't have legs, most of the time, I would just do laps around the track in my wheelchair. But this one morning, my camp counselor really wanted to push me. He really wanted to challenge me. Challenge me, not just physically, but challenge me mentally as well. Aircraft 863, ready? Yeah, aircraft 863, ready? My camp counselor happened to be a guy by the name of Brock Lesnar. <laughs> you guys heard of Brock Lesnar? I guess so. Former UFC champion, WWE wrestler. Well, just so you guys know, before all of that, Coach Lesnar, he was a wrestler for the University of Minnesota, where he was the NCAA national champion. That's why he's my camp counselor. And one morning, Coach Lesnar says to me, all right, bro, how about we do something different? He brings me down inside the middle of the track, where there's a football field, brings me down one end zone. He says, Ro, hop out of your wheelchair, which I did for him. He then looks at me, he tells me, all right, Ro, I want you somehow for me, try walking down to that end zone, 100 yards, 100 yards, and a handstand, all the way down. He then says, Ro, when you get down to that first end zone, how about you try doing a pyramid of 10 push-ups? Try doing a pyramid of 10 push-ups. Then after all of that, he said, Ro, after all those push-ups, try walking back down, another 100 yards, back down to his first end zone. And initially, I thought Coach was kidding, but he wasn't. And I was up for my life, when I would just do anything to improve, I would do anything to make myself, not only a better wrestler, not only a better wrestler, but a better person as well. So I did for Coach 100 yards, just like this. And to be honest with you, I was having a pretty difficult time. I mean, I was stumbling, I even fell down a couple times, and I had to pick myself back up, <laughs> like so. And finally, I made halfway to the 50-yard line. Made halfway to the 50-yard line, and Coach Lesnar surprised me. Coach Lesnar told me because the workout was so hard and so difficult that I could stop and go back. Coach Lesnar told me because the workout was so difficult, I had to finish. But I told Coach no because I'm the type of person that when I start something, I'm gonna. So 100 yards, just like this, all the way down. Finally made down to that first end zone. Now Coach Lesnar told me I had to do a pyramid of 10 push-ups. And that's pretty tough in itself, right? Because a pyramid of 10 push-ups isn't just one, two, three, four. It goes something like this. One, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, all the way up to 10. And after all those push-ups, Coach Lesnar, being as intense as he is, he then says, bro, you made it look easy. Just trust me, it's not. He says, bro, how about you add five, maybe 10, clap push-ups, then come back down. <laughs> My clap push-up is a little bit different. Kids love this. All right, hold on. <laughs> Mm. All right. Then finally, after all those push-ups, after all those clap push-ups, now the hard part. No, 100 yards, back down to the first end zone for Coach Lesnar. I had to finish. He was down and waiting for me. I couldn't let him down. And once again, I can't say it enough. Can't stress it enough. Coach Lesnar, by making me do this crazy workout up and down the football field, he wasn't trying to test me physically. It was more 
Will I give up? Will I break? Will I give in? The sport of wrestling, this may sound funny, but I'm telling you, is 90% mental, 10% physical. At least to me it was. That conditioning, when you get tired on the match, you're going to give up, you're going to keep on going. It's so mental. It's so mental. But anyhow, once again, another 100 yards for Coach Lesnar. But here's the important part. I always tell kids the story because growing up without legs, believe me, trust me, my family and I, we were always surrounded by a lot of different doctors, physical therapists, specialists that told me what I couldn't do in life. They always told me what I wouldn't be able to accomplish in life without legs. So as a kid growing up, whenever somebody told me that I wouldn't be able to accomplish something, I did anyway, <laughs> just to prove them wrong and prove to them that I could be successful. No matter what. Let me give you an example of that. Like I said growing up, when I was younger, I had three goals. I told you two of them. Play a sport, and then somebody at the high school graduate from. So one day back in 11th grade, I had a meeting with my guidance counselor that I'll never forget. We were in his office, my parents were there as well. We were going to different schools, colleges, universities. I told them, my first choice, my dream school, was Penn State. Penn State, a school that was great academically. Great school academically, but a school with also one of the best, if not the best, Division I wrestling programs. I told my guidance counselor, I want to go to Penn State. I told him I want to someday wrestle for Penn State. But most importantly, I told him I want to someday graduate from Penn State University. But he told me, he said to me, wrote Penn State. He said, Ro, that's a great school. I know you got the grades for Roe, but Penn State, Ro, I don't know what's right for you, he said. He said, Ro, that's a huge campus, 45,000, 45,000 students on one campus. Wouldn't that be too much for you? He said it also snows there a lot in the winter, and believe me, it does. He says, Ro, if it snows at campus so often at Penn State, how do we get to class on your own? How do we get around campus on your own? How would you manage that? Well, to make a long story short, I went to Penn State, and I graduated from Penn State University. And just in case any of you were wondering how I was really able to really get around campus, get to class on my own at Penn State when it snowed, simple. I would just call campus security, have them pick me up, and take me to class. <laughs> VIP, VIP. And back to that camp anyhow, I think I impressed Coach Lesnar by doing a workout across the football field. Why? Because Coach Lesnar made me do it again. Great guy, huh? <laughs> and the very last day of camp, the very last day of camp, the 20th day of wrestling camp, it's pretty special. They call it graduation day. You wake up, you run a marathon, then you leave, you go home. But the thing about the marathon, what really made a difference is that for the very first time at camp, for the very first time at camp, each wrestler, each kid, was given a choice. Each kid was given a choice to run either five, 10, or even 15 miles. Take a while to guess at how many miles I chose to do in that wheelchair. Well, it was actually 16 or 17 because I got lost on the way home. <laughs> but the point is, just like all those kids at that camp, just like all those guys at that camp when I was younger, all of you, as you get older, you all have that same choice, right? You all have that choice to be either average, good, or great at whatever you love to do. I hope, I hope from here on out, you choose to be great. I hope from here on out, you choose to get the most out of life. I hope from here on out, you always choose to be personal best. Because as we all know, you only get one life. You get one life. So you might as well make it count with or without legs. I came to that camp anyhow. I did pretty well in high school wrestling. After high school, once again, I attended Penn State University. And when I was in college at Penn State, I decided to go for a Penn State wrestling team. So one day, I had a Penn State wrestling coach. I knocked on his door. The coach answered. I told him, Coach, my name is Rohan Murphy, and I would love to be a part of the Penn State wrestling team. He has a big smile on his face. He says, sure, Ro, this is great. He says, Ro, how about you become one of our managers? You can help us take stats for the matches. You can, you can help us videotape the matches. He says, Ro, be one of our helpers. Be one, be one of our managers. I told him, Coach, no. I said, Coach, I want to wrestle. I want to be on the Penn State wrestling team. He then says, well, Ro, if you're in a wheelchair and if you don't have legs, how could you wrestle? I told him, Coach, it's hard to explain, but I could show you. 
He says, all right. So I took him down right in his office. <laughs> Coach says, all right, all right, that's enough. And um, he has me fill out some, some NCAA compliance forms, calls up his athletic director, asking him if this is even allowed. <laughs> and he gives me a try for the peasant wrestling team. And our very first practice of the year was something a little bit different. Something, something out of the ordinary for wrestlers. It was a preseason condition workout. Late August was, as you all know, once again, wrestling is more of a winter sport. And it was a workout where all the guys on the team were going to rub a very tall, steep hill. It was actually a ski slope right outside of Penn State campus. And I just remember that going to this practice, looking at all my new teammates around me, watching me get warmed up, stretching out, getting ready to run up this tall hill on their feet. And I said to myself, man, if I'm going to make a Penn State wrestling team, if I'm going to be successful, not only collegiate wrestling, but I become successful in life as well, I can never, ever use this as an excuse. I can never tell someone I can't do this workout because I don't have legs. I can never tell someone I can't send me out to high school, go to college, and graduate because I'm disabled. Now, now my life motto, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Try to keep it simple for the kids. It's no excuses. No excuses. You want something out of life? Go get it. Go earn it. Go achieve it. So, after all my teammates have rubbed the hell on their feet, I follow them on my hands, through the dirt, through the grass, through the gravel. It took me about an hour and a half to, to make it up top of the hill, about an hour and a half to make it up top of the hill, but I did it, and I finished it, why? No excuses. And I once heard Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. say, where are you going in life? You should fly there. Get there as fast as possible, and don't you ever let anyone or anything stop you. And if you can't fly in life, you have to run. And if you can't run, you have to walk. And even if you can't do that, like myself, you have to somehow start to see. You know, I think when a lot of people see me in public who don't know who I am, strangers see me, whether it be at the grocery store or mall, whatever, a lot of people look down at me. A lot of people say to themselves, man, that guy doesn't have legs. That's terrible. That's rough. How do you live life without legs? That guy, he was dealt a bad hand in life. I'm fine with that. I really truly am. They can think whatever they want to think. Because to me, just because you're dealt a bad hand in life doesn't mean you have to fold. Doesn't mean you gotta give up. You gotta persevere. You gotta come on going in life. You see, I'm a true believer in that every single person eventually has to overcome something. Every single person eventually has to overcome something. Has to overcome some type of hardship, some type of struggle, or maybe even some type of adversity in life. And adversity, for most of the kids that I speak to at schools across this country, adversity comes in many different shapes and forms. It could be growing up in a single parent household, maybe watching their parents go through a messy divorce, maybe watching their family struggle financially, or maybe even something pretty unique and extreme like not having legs, like myself. But I tell them all the time, if I can overcome this, if I can overcome this, and if I can live a great life despite of all this, that's why I said it, I have a great life. <laughs> Don't let this fool you. I live a great life. And if I can accomplish great things in my life, why can't all they? Why can't they do the same? What's holding them back? What's stopping them? At the end of the day, what's gonna be their excuse? You know? And I think my, my whole story goes back to an eighth grade phys ed teacher who got me involved in the sport of wrestling. To me, it wasn't just a sport he got me involved in. To me, the eighth grade phys ed teacher, he gave me something much more important than that. He gave me something called purpose. You know? Something to look forward to every day after school. Something to just really work at. Something to really strive for to be great at, the sport of wrestling. And that purpose in life really just gave me a passion. I built up a lot of passion for the sport of wrestling. I love to do it. It was what I want to be great at. And through that passion, it gave me a sense of pride. You know, for the first time in my life, when I was wrestling back in high school, for those first couple matches, I was so proud of myself. I was proud of myself to go out there, get your hand raised at the end of the wrestling match, become a winner. And through all that, it gave me a different perspective in life. And I think now, since I have this different perspective, I can go to schools and share my story. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, life's all about the four P's to me. It's all about the four P's. Purpose, passion, pride, perspective. I'm a true believer in that we all have to go through this process of life to really become successful. So, 
If you know anyone that's maybe lost their way for whatever reason, help them find their purpose in life. Something that they want to be great at. Something that they want to be not just great at, but love to do as well. All right? And uh, before I show a video for you guys, I get a couple questions from kids all the time. And one great question that I get from kids all the time is that a lot of kids ask me, bro, if you have legs for a day, if you have legs for a day, what's the one thing that you love to do? Honestly, that's a great question because there are a lot of things I love to experience with legs. A lot of things I love to do with legs. Maybe try going for a walk on the beach during the summers here on Long Island. I've always wanted to do that. Uh, ever, since I, ever since I was a little kid, I've always wanted to go swimming as well. I've always been fascinated by swimming. Maybe try going off a bike ride as well with friends. Oh, that'd be great. Oh, that'd be wonderful. But if I could choose one thing, just one thing, I think I would choose to just be able to go somewhere in public, like the mall or the movies, like all of you, be able to walk around and just know and experience what it's like not to have every single person stare at you. Just once. Just once. What I'm trying to say is, I don't think you, I don't think you guys realize how lucky you are. I don't think you realize how blessed to have the lives that you have. As you get older, don't take your lives for granted. Do not take your lives for granted. Because from where I'm sitting, or from my perspective, you guys have a great life and are extremely blessed, extremely lucky. Sound good? Cool. All right. Play a video for you guys. A couple, of minutes, a couple of years ago, I had an honor to be featured on ABC 2020. It was my seven minutes of fame. Hope you enjoy it. After the video, I'll take questions. Thanks, guys. All right, we're ready, sir. Cool. Now that we've roused your sense of wonder, we're going to rev it up with some inspiration. It comes in the form of a young athlete who has turned his feelings of teenaged inadequacy into a triumph of spirit and body. Bill Ritter has the seventh wonder of the night. This is Rohan Murphy doing his daily workout. I mean, really, how to look like this guy? Those arms, those shoulders, that chest. Exactly how strong is he? Well, talk about superpower. Rohan can bench press nearly three times his body weight. No shocker that he's a certified physical trainer at the Gold's Gym in his hometown of Islip, New York. In fact, Rohan is such a magnificent physical specimen, you can almost forget the one thing that truly sets him apart. He has no legs. Was there ever a point where you said, you know, dang, you know, why me? Yeah, definitely. I think when you're a kid, you just want to be just like all your friends. And unfortunately, I couldn't be like all my friends. I couldn't go off of bike rides. I couldn't play sports with them, you know? That was heartbreaking, but I just had to overcome that. What Rohan had to overcome were birth defects. No hip on one side, half a joint on the other. His legs never worked until they were amputated when he was four. For cosmetic reasons, he sometimes wore prosthetics. His fingers were also defective. They were surgically separated when he was five. Suffice it to say, Rohan was different. And it wasn't easy growing up. I really just didn't want to accept being disabled, you know? Whenever somebody would ask me about my disability, they would, they would come up and say, hey, why are you in a wheelchair? And then I would lash out at them. How did, how did you lash out? I would just say, it's none of your business. I just felt like I was going to explode. It was a potent combination. Teenage angst, coupled with trying to fit into a school where there were few minorities and no other disabled people. I remember those days after hearing the ninth period bell ring and all my friends were saying, I talk to you later, I'm going to soccer practice, I'll see you later, I'm going to football practice, and there I was with nowhere to go. And all I wanted to do was just fit in. One person would change all that. Middle school gym teacher Ron Crota saw something that even Rohan couldn't see. And so he asked Rohan to be a sports team manager, the first step in the coach's grand plan. One day before you know it, I had him doing pull-ups in class. Did like 30 or 40 pull-ups, so I always knew I was pretty strong. He said, oh, you know, I probably could do a lot more if I took my legs off. And I could see, you know, taking that weight off, he could really you know, pull out a lot of pull-ups. In fact, Rohan did so well, he broke the school record for most pull-ups. It was then that Coach Crota talked him into becoming an athlete. 
a wrestler. And it was on the wrestling mat where Rohan, with half the body but twice the strength, found what had eluded him everywhere else. Acceptance. To be honest with you, that was the best part, you know? The team camaraderie. It was like a second family. I just knew that wrestling was going to take me somewhere where I've never been before. I know it was going to give me a different life. Do you think you have an advantage? There aren't too many wrestlers without legs that you can go train with. <laughs> so, I think that's definitely an advantage. You need to practice, right? Exactly. So you're faster, you're more nimble, what is it? Uh, well, I think my biggest advantage was probably just my strength, you know? Because I was in such a lightweight class in high school, I wrestled 90 pounds. So you're wrestling kids who I assume most of them are not built like you are. Well, not an upper body at least. So, you have this disability, but in fact, it advantage Rohan Murphy. Yeah, definitely, you know. And the funny thing was, the more I excelled in wrestling, the more I excelled in life, whether it was socially or academically in school. So I really felt that wrestling just took me to another level in my life. And to try to stay on that level, after Rohan graduated from high school, he went out for the wrestling team at Penn State. No one there had ever seen a legless wrestler before, certainly not the coach, who had first offered him a job as a bench assistant, not as a wrestler. And then I look at him and I'm like, I want to be on a team, I want to wrestle. And he's like, how would you wrestle? So I just whipped my legs off, hopped out of my chair and I showed him some handstand push-ups, that type of thing. This is not hard for you to do? No, it's just a flare. It's kind of a breakdance move. <laughs> so give me a move, show, tell me the move you showed him. Well, I'm going to need you to stand up then. I'm so low to the ground quick, I can just dive in here. Yeah. And get in a shot and take my opponent down. And he said to you what? Wow, that's incredible. Well, I think I probably had to lift my lift my uh, job off the floor, but um, it was I was just like I was like my mind just started twirling like ah, well can we how can we do this and she sure was skeptical I was skeptical no doubt but the skepticism quickly turned to amazement and it wasn't just the college crowd that Rohan electrified his just do it attitude caught the attention of Nike. In late 2008, I got contacted by somebody and they were saying that Nike's looking for an athlete for a, for a New Year's Day campaign titled No Excuses. It's written on the rainbow in letters made of gold. He quickly won them over and what followed was a mind-blowing TV commercial. They loved it. They were just like, you know, you know their jaw just dropped. They were laughing, they smiled, and they just thought it was amazing. Watch the donut, not the boat. As for Rowan's personal life, at 26, he is now quite independent and also quite single. It turns out, Rowan's shy. You can put me in front of uh, 500 kids and ask me to speak. That'd be easy. You can put me in front of one beautiful girl and I'd be like... <laughs> but he is anything but shy about his career. And as you can see, he has no trouble wowing an audience. Rowan has turned his personal triumphs into an inspirational message. He is now a motivational speaker. Thank you. I know I make doing those push look easy, but unfortunately my life hasn't been so easy, you know? I was born with a severe birth defect. What do you think resonates with people when they hear your story? A lot of people take things for granted in life, and maybe even having legs, and that's something that I don't have. And I just think it gives people a different perspective, especially kids. It really gave me a new perspective about how much hard work and dedication it really was going to take to become great at wrestling. And that's the way it is for life, for anything. Whether you want to be a state champ wrestler like I did when I was in high school, or you want to be a doctor, a lawyer, you know? I was really inspired. It's amazing what he went through. Well, he faced the obstacles, but the obstacles did not stop him. He kept on going. Uh, he's got muscles like out to here, like it's awesome. You know, when you're a kid, you just want to be like everyone else. But now that I'm older and I'm wiser, you know, I know that being uh, disabled and having to deal with not having lives is a gift. And I have to use that gift to inspire and motivate others. confession to make. So, sometimes when I go to a deli, or maybe somewhere else, I'll order something, and then before I could get to the register, someone will pay for it for me, which is very kind. I always appreciate it. But then they'll come up to me and whisper in my ear, anytime for a vet. And I'm like, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry about that. But just being honest, you know. I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to steal your thunder, you know? <laughs> but, uh, always grateful. But really, though, any questions from me? Any questions? 
So how long have you been public speaking? I've uh, been public speaking for about maybe 10 years or so. Yeah. My whole goal is to speak at school in every state. Right now I've been to 42 states. Uh, the eight states remaining, let me start from the West Coast. Hawaii, Wyoming, South Dakota, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Mississippi, Georgia. So, just one more. Um, how much challenging was it to do public speaking versus you learning to do wrestling? Um, you know, in front of kids, it's much easier. You know, you know, they're pretty, they're pretty simple. And um, I think more challenging, probably wrestling. You know, just the physical aspect of it, along with the mental aspect of it. Um, for me, the most challenging part physically was that I had to get my body into a position where I had leverage to do certain moves. I tell young wrestlers all, all the time, you know, leverage equals strength. So you can have all the muscles in the world, but if you're not in a certain position where you have leverage to do those moves, you're not going to be able to do them. <coughs> so definitely getting that leverage. Hi, good morning. Good morning. I think you're amazing. Um, I'm a mother, so right now, your parents, I bet they're just extremely proud of you. So where are they now, your parents, and what do they think of you now? Um, my parents actually now live in Atlanta, Georgia. So I'm up here in New York, my own. Um, they're just really proud of me. Just the fact that I'm able to live life so independently on my own. I don't really need help. I'm able to do everything on my own and just be fully independent. They're amazed by that. Uh, have you always um, been this uh, happy? And have you ever experienced like real depression at any point? Um, you know, those younger years when I was a kid, those were pretty rough for me. Those were probably the most challenging. Especially when I hit middle school and all my friends would say, I see you later, I'm going to soccer practice after school or something, and you know, I just couldn't be with them on the team as well. So that was pretty challenging as well. But uh, once I found the sport of wrestling, it really just changed my life. Once again, it gave me that purpose, and um, I felt truly blessed that I was able to play a sport and just be able to be successful at it. Did you have to get professional help or just kind of? Uh, no, growing up, I never really saw any uh, professional help mentally like a psychiatrist or something, no. Um, just something that I had to overcome, something I had to deal with, day by day. Uh, I have two questions. What does your, um, your workout program look like week to week? Um, I work at routine right now. Usually, uh, it's like this. Sundays, I do back. Uh, Mondays, cardio and chest. Uh, Tuesdays, cardio and abs. Wednesdays, biceps, triceps, and cardio. Thursdays, shoulders. Fridays, cardio and abs, and my one day off is Saturday. That's my split. We call it the bro split. And <laughs> <laughs> then my next. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, my, my next question was, how um, how do you learn the handstand? That's really impressive. <laughs> Thanks, appreciate it. Like I said, kids love it. Um, <laughs> I, I tell kids all the time. The trick is, give me my my secret here, but uh, don't keep your fingers flat. You want to curl your knuckles, like so. I can stay here all day, you know? <laughs> anyway, that's the trick though, just <clears throat> coat your knuckles. Don't keep your fingers flat. Anyone else? Hi. Um, you? Thank you so much for being here. Thanks. Uh, my name's Sarah, so nice to meet you. Um, Likewise. Unexpected treat again to have you today. What question do you wish people would ask you? You know, <laughs> I kind of try to help out my audiences, you know, especially since they're kids. But don't ever ask me, what was the third goal? <laughs> the third goal was just to be independent, be fully independent, be able to live my own as an adult. I've always won that as a kid, always dreamt of that. Thankfully, I'm able to do that. Yeah, just be independent. My question for you is, um, you spoke about the adversity that you've seen from birth to where you are, but. A lot of people don't think about when you get here, how do you maintain that mindset to always be grateful and just not fall back into where you were? Uh, I think it goes back to what I was saying about wanting to be <clears throat> not just good, but great. Never being satisfied, never being content, and that's just who I am naturally. Uh, whether it's at the gym working out, never satisfied, always trying to improve, trying to get better numbers on the bench, on my back workouts, pull up, stuff like that. And just now, I guess in a, as an adult, business-wise, not being satisfied with just speaking at schools in Long Island, trying to branch out, trying to get more schools nationally, and just a day-by-day -day process. 
that guy back at that camp on, Jay Robinson, he always told us we should strive to be 1% better every day. 1% better every day. If you, if you do that over time, you'll get to your goals eventually. 1% better. Good morning. Um, so question for you, uh, you studied at Penn State. What did you uh, end up getting your degree in? I graduated with a degree <coughs> in kinesiology. Kinesiology. What is kinesiology? Uh, study movement science, how the body creates locomotion. But once again, I've always been fascinated with physical fitness and working out, so that was right up my alley. Kids always ask me, well, Ro, how is having a kinesi degree help you for motivational speaking? I usually tell them that it helps me get my foot in the door. <laughs> yeah, kids never get that joke, by the way. We're your best friends. No doubt, no doubt. Like kids, but similar yeah. jokes. Yeah. Not that, not that I'm trying to cut you short, but two more questions. Cool. Uh, Mr. Murphy, uh, thanks for speaking with us today. Um, I have a question about a statement you made, and I'm paraphrasing. But you said you'd have, you'd like to have a day where you weren't looked at different. Is that something to that extent? Um, would you ever consider uh, prosthetics again with the advances in technology? I would never consider prosthetics again. I'm just at the point in my life when I'm over it. You know, I am who I am, and I accept it, and I embrace it most importantly. And wearing prosthetics is hard to explain, but they're so uncomfortable. It's like wearing shackles. They're heavy. They're uncomfortable, and Growing up, I just couldn't really use prosthetics because physically, um, my limbs, hope you guys don't mind me showing you, but my limbs, if you probably noticed, they're pretty small. So I wasn't able to bear the weight of prosthetics and be able to walk with them. That's why prosthetics never really worked out for me. I just wore prosthetics cosmetically, I guess you would say, just so when I went somewhere in public, people wouldn't stare at me as much. But um, physically, I just can't use prosthetics, so. Okay, yeah. My pleasure. One more, one more. Any other, do you speak at any other military base? Oh, uh, no, it's my first time. So, oh, cool. yeah, yeah. Thank you, much appreciated. Thank you, thank you. Something I'll never forget, trust me. So thank you so much for having me. It's an honor, it really and truly is. Well, sir, if you would like. Yeah, no, so I just, uh, on behalf of the wing, we just uh, are so proud to, to host you and have you here. Uh, your story resonates, uh, and I think it resonates with us, uh, and that's why, you know, I was halfway joking when I said we're your best audience. We're like kids, but get some of your jokes, but... I uh, <laughs> we'll appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely, but uh, you know, we're also a good audience, I think, because we can, we, we share in some of those adversity. You know, I, I, every single one of these uh, folks have been asked to do a lot. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, for their country. And, and so, you know, they, they have overcome or, or, or surpassed some sort of adversity. Uh, probably not to the scale that you have, uh, and that's why your story resonates with us, though. Uh, and so I truly appreciate you coming out, and on behalf of the wing, I just want to present a, uh, a point. Thank you so much. Uh, so you remember us here at the 106, and I appreciate you coming down, and we're your first uh, military audience, uh, and it's only fitting, you know, being a hometown Long Island guy uh, here at, uh, at the hometown wing, if you will. So. Uh, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's an honor.